Hello, my name is Carolyn Mazuka, and today I will be discussing the formation of the kinetic and thermodynamic enolates from chapter 23. So we know that enolates are formed when a hydrogen is lost from an alpha carbon. We get two products when there's two different types of alpha carbons on an asymmetrical molecule. When the purple hydrogen leaves, we're left with our alkene here, and when the blue hydrogen leaves, our alkene is here. The molecule on the right over here is more stable because the alkene is more substituted. However, on the left, because there's two hydrogens actually at that carbon versus the one on the other carbon, this molecule can be seen as the faster product. The word we use to describe this product is kinetic because of the two hydrogens it tends to be faster and, and this other one we call thermodynamic because it tends to be more stable. Now that we know how the enolates form, we need to take a look at what factors determine which one forms under which circumstances. First, let's take a look at what kind of bases we need to make these reactions happen. To get the kinetic enolate, we need strong, non-nucleophilic bases, which allows the enolate to form fast. And an example of this kind of base that we typically use is LDA. LDA has a pKa of about 40, which means it's a very strong base and works well with this reaction. Another benefit of LDA is that it's a rather large base, looking like this. What this allows is a decrease in the likelihood that it will remove the more substituted proton. To achieve the thermodynamic enolate, we still need a strong base. However, we tend to pick a smaller base, such as sodium ethoxide, which still has a relatively high pKa. Next, let's take a look at what temperatures we need to make these reactions occur. To get the kinetic product, we need really low temperatures to prevent the equilibrium um, shifting to the stable product. What we generally use is negative 78 degrees Celsius or simply 0 degrees Celsius. The thermodynamic product happens at higher temperatures. These higher temperatures allow more energy to enter the reaction and that encourages the more stable product. For the higher temperatures, we generally just use room temperature, which we indicate to be 25 degrees Celsius. Finally, the solvent is equally as important when controlling whether we get the kinetic enolate or thermodynamic enolate. For the kinetic product, we need polar aprotic solvents because it dissolves the polar reactants and stabilizes the intermediate. What we generally use for this are THF and diethyl ether. The polar aprotic solvent helps the enolate from reprotonating, which again helps us to avoid that equilibrium that prefers the more stable product. For the thermodynamic product, we want that equilibrium, so what we use is polar protic solvents. And generally what we use here are methanol, ethanol, or simply just water. So the real important question is, what can we do with this information? Well, imagine you're starting out with a carbonyl group on an asymmetrical molecule. We now know how to add things to both alpha carbons. All we need to do is decide which is the kinetic, which is the thermodynamic, and which order do we do them in. Really, the most important thing you need to know here is that the thermodynamic enolate should be formed first, otherwise the kinetic enolate won't even occur. So, based on what we just learned, we know we can react it with a strong base, which will use sodium methoxide. and a polar product solvent, we can use methanol. We react this at 25 degrees Celsius to get our thermodynamic enolate. Now to get this methyl group here that we're looking for, 
we can just react this with a CH3Cl and that will react with the enolate as long as we do this in one, two, two steps. Now all that's left to do is react with the kinetic enolate to get our final product. And this can all be done in one synthesis step. Just like before, we need to add a base and a solvent. This time, we need a strong non-nucleophilic base that's very large, and for this we use LDA. And our solvent has to be polar aprotic. And for this, we'll use THF. Because it's kinetic, we'll react at a very low temperature, so we'll use negative 78 degrees Celsius. And then our second part is adding that carbon group, which again, we just do with a CL. And with that, we have our final product. So overall, this is how we use kinetic and thermodynamic enolates to do our synthesis problems.